Hello and welcome to the MVR podcast number 23. Um, today, no, sorry, my name is Rachel <laughs> Melma. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a good idea to introduce yourself, Rachel. Yes, sorry. <laughs> and I'm Peter Jacob. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. And today we're talking about when parents feel they don't matter. Yeah. Interesting topic. Okay. Um, did you want me to sort of start with how we got to that topic? Yeah. Tell me, Peter, how did we get to that <laughs> conversation? Well, of course, you always ask me to say how we got to the topic, even if it was your idea. Because uh, you, were, you were speaking about another um thought another topic which is that we notice that very often res- parents responses to a child are made conditional upon how the parents or caregivers or professionals think the child will react in the moment very much so yeah you were mm-hmm. talking about a case where someone said or training i think where where a practitioner said oh but if the parents said that to the child she would tell them to go where the sun doesn't shine or something like that yeah i think it was a slightly different term um but um so so we were talking about that and that led you to bring up uh, a case that you've been working on recently where a father just felt that he he just doesn't matter to his daughter rightly or wrongly mm. probably wrongly and that was because of her immediate response to what he he does to the mm-hmm. efforts he makes and i thought i, I think it'd be great if you you would just sort of describe that situation that he told you about that makes him feel so um, irrelevant, if that's the right term. Yeah. The, the feeling of, you know, his words were going through some of the obligatories that a father does when a child is in his care mm-hmm. and, or a parent, what a parent can do. And, and, so one of the things we talked about was him going up to say goodnight. And before the work we began, the MVR work started, he felt it was very obligatory. It was just it was just an action that he felt needed to happen. So, you know, go upstairs, open the door. He's gone through the motions. He's gone through the motions. Good night. And then her response is, yeah, good night, you know, and type of thing and you just made that gesture that hand waving gesture that waving him away gesture and so you come up you said good night and you know as young people might respond um and now the father is going up the stairs and visualizing what's going to happen as he enters the room and his presence and where he sees himself just in that moment so as he climbs each step, he's thinking about this interaction as he's outside and his door, his hand goes on the door to open it. He's thinking about the language he's going to use. He's thinking about how he's going to position himself, how he's going to connect to his daughter, but also to himself. What message is he going to give? And and so it was what I would describe as like a really purposeful interaction mm-hmm. and her response to his purposeful interaction was still very dismissive. So, yeah, you've come up, say goodnight, goodbye, you know, go. And again, the hand gesture. And so we've really talked about what it felt like for this hand gesture, for this dismissive response from his daughter. And we talked about the differences of his previous encounters with his daughter to what they are now and the purposeful encounters and where he feels those differences in his body and, and, and lots of different things. But one of the things that we talked about was the sense of him not feeling that he mattered mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in her life, that he didn't matter at all 
in in her world and 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 the impact of those thoughts of of how that feels for a parent to not feel they matter um and i think it'd be it's just it's just a really hard place for a parent to sit mm. but 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 he explored those differences what they are now and he's getting a much deeper sense of mattering regardless of her response but he mattered yeah and you said that he had experienced this sense of not mattering as mm. extremely painful absolutely and mm. i guess that um that connects with the the understanding that being a parent and being someone who cares for the child i mean proactively who cares for the child but who also offers care which is vital to the child and to matter to the child in that sense is part of who we are as a parent it's part mm. of our identity it's part of uh, it constitutes part of the self of the parent mm. and when it feels that we are being denied the validation that we matter mm. it's almost like something is chipping away or breaking off pieces of our self of our sense of self of our identity Mm. Now, that's pretty powerful stuff. And I think that, as you described so beautifully, that that identity connecting with, well, who, well, who am I then? Yeah. If, if I don't matter to, to you. To, to the child I love. Yeah. yeah. Then who am I? Yeah. So, so then it can and might have or might contribute to the parent then just not bothering. Yeah. And I won't go out and say, right, because what's the point? Or, I don't matter to that. Or is in the case of this father going through the motions because one is supposed to say goodnight to one's child, but it doesn't matter to her anyway. But what I'm curious about is you described it sort of in two stages. So the first stage where he did that, and in the second stage, after the two of you had and a lot of work on that, he, he prepared himself mentally mm. for how he was going to say goodnight to his daughter. So a sense of importance of what he's doing, saying goodnight, must have grown inside of him. And, um, or else he wouldn't have done that that's sort of one, and I have a second sort of thought about that as well, but that, that's the first thought. I was just wondering, how how did you and he get there to that point where he could feel, I, I will plan this, I will make it meaningful, even though she's still going to wave me away with her hand? Yeah. I we talked about what relationship that he wants with his daughter and and she's at the she's a tender age of of early teens and how he you know what he wants his future relationship to look like and how he wants his whole family to look so we talked a bit about that and we talked about his purpose in his in his daughter's life Mm -hmm. And that strength came from him defining that he wants to matter. Yeah. That that was important to him. I matter. I do matter. Yeah. But there, there, there must be some point where something turns around in in his mindset or turned around in his mindset because at first... I feel I don't matter because she's dismissive, because she waves me away. And then I feel I matter even though she waves me away. So I, I'm not getting that immediate validation from my child. I must, I must, um, 
I must construct that sense of being of importance to her in some other way. And I, I'm wondering how that that turnaround, that switch, how that happened. I think there are a number of other things in this parent's life that has contributed to this sense of not mattering. And and so not just his relationship with his daughter, but you sure. know, other, other contributing factors that that we talked about. But but regard to the mattering, we talked as well about how we thought his daughter saw him and whether she thought she mattered mm-hmm. as well. And so I think sometimes, you know, when we when we can turn the tables and explore and visualise the child's perspective, mm-hmm. the internal um, thoughts and processes of the young person, I think perhaps it struck a chord with the dad, you know, that they both equally mattered and that they were both reaching out and not getting anywhere. And what I asked the dad to do was to respond and to continue to offer his unconditional positive regard to his daughter in re- regardless of how she rebuffs or rejects or dismisses him um, and to and what it felt like for him to offer that purposeful bidding good night you know how connected he felt with himself and with his daughter in that pocket of time so if, if I understand you correctly, you were inviting him to put himself in his daughter's shoes. Mm-hmm. And maybe if you're standing in his daughter's shoes, well, when my dad just says good night because he's going through the motions, regardless of why that is, maybe I don't feel that connected to him. Maybe I don't feel that I'm so important to him. Yet, when he starts doing it in a way that is, you know, his heart is in it. Uh, his his it's an embodied response, oh. and it becomes unconditional, even though I'm waving him away. He's still doing it, and he's still, and I can feel he means it. He's, that lovely bit about her waving him away. Yeah, his. His his how he described that interaction in that moment was that he didn't in the past he would have just kind of scurried out the room. I, I don't mean scurried in a mouse like way. No, no, I, I I know. Yeah, he would have turned on his heels and just gone. You know, yeah. not 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 aggressive, not passive, but he would have just gone. Yeah. And what he's describing now is that he's purposefully holding. You know, three, five, six seconds longer connecting with her, he's kind of using a bit of neuro de-escalation, tilting his head, just giving us lovely eye contact, and then leaving with a, I love you, you know, that lovely gesture of, you matter to me. So it's, it's really significant, isn't it? Just staying those two, three seconds longer, or five Mm -hmm. seconds longer, saying I love you, and meaning it, uh-huh. rather than retreating, rather than fleeing the hurt. The yeah. other bit about, the, I'm interrupting because it's mm-hmm. kind of some of the words, the dismissive from his daughter was that his response to that was, she needs me to go, she doesn't like this, so I'll go. So yeah. being appeasing to her dismissiveness I don't want to upset her anymore. I don't want to be in her room any longer than she doesn't want me here. Yeah. He is dismissing me, so I'll go. And so we just sort of unpicked a bit of that and we talked about what it would feel like to not react to that dismissive immediately and to hold that position and to ground yourself and to breathe and to look at her and then to leave with a gesture when you're ready to leave. And it... it, it... It sort of seems to bring us back to the notion, uh, you know, this in dialogical practices of polyphony, of the different voices in the person, different voices of the self, Mm. which are brought out 
mm. by different contexts. So when the context changes, um, then the voice that is brought out in me will change. You know, and I, and I'm just thinking. So it's it seems to me that in the work with you, he became able to appeal to, I don't know whether appeal is the right word, to speak to, to communicate with a different voice in his daughter, a voice which is unheard, has been unheard so far by him, and also by her. She hasn't heard that own voice of hers, but he's He's just, he's, he's taking that leap of faith. He's responding to that voice. It's like it must be there. Somewhere inside of this child is a response to me um, that in a constructive way, she needs me. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what we're kind of slowly unpicking mm -hmm. in our work about the mattering, that you do matter. You matter to you, you matter to her. Mm. She needs you to matter. Yeah. She wants you to matter. And she wants her to matter in your life. You know, it's all yeah. about the mattering. Yeah. 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 But I think I know what I'm I know what I mean and I know what I'm talking about. I don't know if it makes sense to somebody who's But I guess I guess the way that the father starts appealing to or, or creates a context which makes space for her more positive voices and, and you know, the voices of connection with, with her father. Um, the way he does it uh, is based on the NVR principle of one-sided action. Mm -hmm. you know, I will do this and I will do this. And, and it's not, it's not contingent upon how my daughter will react to it. I will and it's do also, you. yeah, it, I'm going to do this anyway. And we've talked, we talked about that. You, you want to go and say good night because you want to say good night. Yeah, yeah. Also, most importantly, it's completely non-violent and peaceful. Yeah. So you know, on top of that, it's not he's not going in the room. I'm coming in to say good night. You can't make me not say good night. You know. Yeah, you know, I'm your father. You will appreciate me saying good night to you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but he's not doing that, and no. he's also not creeping in like a you know. I've just come to say good night, little voice person. Yeah. You know, he's he's in there, and and I love how we did the whole you know, imaginary process of what he's going to say, how he wants to stand, how he grounded himself before he went in the room, holding that position for a couple of seconds, getting some eye contact. Of course, she's really miffed off with him. Miffed, I said. Um, and, and she's, you know, she's curious and she's frustrated with his different responses. Um, and she's trying harder to dismiss him. I would wonder, though, whether she's also confused because suddenly there's a very different father. Mm. And I wonder whether uh, this different father who has so much more embodied presence and who's communicating so much more to her simply by standing there a little longer, simply by his facial expression, by, by his intonation, by how strong his voice is, by how he looks at her, you know, um, won't that make it harder in the longer run for her to dismiss him? That's my plan. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and Dad is just oozing confidence, and he's amazing in his you know, the the repair that he knows needs to happen in his relationship with her right. is so, so important to him that he holds her so dear to his heart um, and wants to get it right for her and for the rest of the family. Um, so his determination is 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 brilliant. Um, yeah. So it looks like he's going to persist. Totally. And again, the one-sided action in NVR, you know, is connected with persistence, isn't it? You know, she, mm. she, may, she may wave her hand dismissively one, two, three, four, five times, 
but this is meaningful. I feel this is meaningful, so I will continue to do this. Yeah, this is important to me. Yeah, and, and I mean, you said something before we um, started recording that has stuck in my mind. You you brought it onto a societal or cultural level. Mm -hmm. you, you said in this society, we are so dependent on how the child reacts in the moment to what we do, and yeah. and I was just, and I was just sort of thinking. And NVR runs totally counter to that. Um, In a sense, some of the, the core principles, particularly the, the principle of one-sided action, um, runs counter to the notion, I, you know, I, can, I should only do what in me in the immediate response brings up uh, something positive mm. well, I was yeah. wondering what your thoughts were when you said when you brought that onto that societal level and you said we as a society or as a culture we do that I think because I come into contact with so many other professionals in our field who are attending our training and um, this this kind of curiosity comes up and it's the theme that runs every time we deliver a, a training um a, you know a foundational whatever training that we deliver you know what and quite often a, a participant will say oh well I can imagine if you know if one of the parents I'm working with did that then their child their, their child would hit the roof their child would go mad you know particularly when we're thinking about parental presence outside the home and and when it comes into tailing um you know oh god you know god forbid i can imagine if you know a parent i was working with did that to their child turned up at the park with drinks you know the child would be humiliated a parent could not do that they could, a parent cannot humiliate their child in such a way and this is the park where the the child is maybe exposed to drug dealers or <laughs> this is the park where you know the child is at risk of harm mm -hmm. yeah and, and the parent is encouraged to increase their presence outside the home and to to explore ways in which they can allow their presence to be known transparently explicitly not in secret you know not in pink panther style incognito <laughs> um but, but but how some of the responses from professionals working with such families are dismissive of this from the onset in training environment and it just brings to me the society our society not all but our society are fearful of the child's acceptance of the parent's authority or non-acceptance or not acceptance yeah. of the parental authority and that leaves parents in a real quandary so it sounds like these colleagues are articulating a rule and the rule stipulates that the parents must only do what the child will approve of or appreciate. And if the parents were to respond to the child, particularly where the child is at risk, in ways that the child will not appreciate and will not approve of, then their action has failed. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's it. And so we're bringing in a different perspective, aren't we, in the work? We are. Yeah, that you can matter even if you do not, in the first instance, get the appreciation from your child, which would validate your efforts. I, I'd like to I'd like to tell clients that um, as adult men, my sons have sort of patted me on the shoulders and said, "Yeah, you didn't do such a bad job, Dad." <laughs> yeah. You've got to wait for validation, don't you? My my daughter told me she's not having children because she can't bring them up the way that I brought her up. Oh no. I know. My halo slips. 
Oh, anyway. I think I think for me this this topic I continue to work with parents and professionals enabling them to see the interaction from the parent is paramount and important and I think that the, that sentence you can matter brings about so much change for parents it's a wonderful shift to leave that place of not mattering into a place of I can matter, I do matter, I have a right to be your parent. And even when, you know, the the, the child might need to be placed in another environment for a while to, to settle, that the, the parent can still matter in that relationship. Yeah. And the strength the parent can continue to show their child, whether the child lives with them or not, is about that that strength of mattering. I can matter. I really like what you just said at the end there. I can matter. Yeah. And I guess um, it opens up all manner of avenues into um, looking at things differently. You know, how important is ongoing contact between parents and their children who are in care, you know, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, But also, I guess, another uh, avenue is the culturally quite widespread belief that what the parent does is only meaningful or successful if the child appreciates it or approves of it, Um, I think that opens up a whole new topic, which we can look at in another podcast, uh, Mm. that of um, permission, you know, Mm -hmm. to Mm. what degree are parents reliant and professionals reliant on permission from the child? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, you know, when we talk about these podcasts, um, just wanted to add a, a little footnote, really, that they were meant to be fortnightly and <laughs> and they're not because we don't always have time, Peter, do we? And um, amongst a million other things, um, getting COVID is a bit of a, a disarming one. So without wow. my bleeding heart bleeds. <laughs> I was just going to say COVID, the universal excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we the podcasts are fortnightly, yeah. kind of. Yeah, kind so, of. Poly- <laughs> so so we'll say goodbye from the kind of fortnightly podcast. We will say goodbye from the kind of fortnightly podcasts. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.